brush, let's paint together With Yender's paint and chat, it's now or never Meet a seasoned artist, date so long We'll chat, share and sing our song Talk about projects, our strategy too So care and recovery, we'll see it through It's not the result, it's the process that counts Get your therapy, create, let your joy mount Stop by, unwind, expand the art community Let's paint this song, Yender's paint and chat in unity Brush, let's paint together with Yander's paint and chat. It's now or never. Meet a seasoned artist, paint along. We'll chat, share, and sing our song. Talk about projects, our strategy too. Self care and recovery, we'll see it through. It's not the result, it's the process that counts. Get your therapy, create, let your joy mount. Stop by, unwind, expand the art community. Yes! Sing it, boys! They're behind me singing all this. Alright, guys. Thanks for stopping by on a Sunday afternoon. Yandor's Peyton Chat. I'm so excited to be here. It's it's the, one of the, the biggest highlights of my week, I gotta tell you, to do this broadcasting thing. So, hope you enjoy the intro. We have a band in the back. They're out in the trees out there in the forest uh, doing their thing. Uh, <laughs> so what, what this is, guys, um, basically a patent chat. We are painting, we're chatting. You got that part. And we're going to share towards the end of with what, we're, what we've worked on. And um, I, uh, I have this, I have this co-host that is usually with me. And uh, he is in the middle of transition, we'll just call it, and was on the road. And like, oh, was today Sunday? Uh, I was like, oh, Ricky Vaughn, Ricky Vaughn. You know, I'll give him some grace. He is a uh, uh, he is a vet, and uh, uh, it's not this Ricky Vaughn. No, no, not this Ricky Vaughn. I know you're thinking Major League, a little a little blast from the past, but uh, no, um, he he uh, he uh, he can't make it today. So I'm riding solo, and uh, the paid and chat concept. Basic me and him started to do this paint and chat idea. They're like, hey, maybe we should just paint and we'll like talk online while we're each working with our projects, right? So then um, after a while, it was like, how, you know, how do we get more people onto this paint and chat? It'd be kind of cool to kind of wrap with other people and other artists. And um, so then we thought, well, maybe we should just do this online live. Um, I'm already doing the Wildcat chat class reunion. So then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just go ahead and invite a seasoned artist and chat with them. And then um, we can segue into the private chat and have uh, a, a more numbers. You know what I mean? So um, we will talk, chat, share. And then also it, this is kind of like, about uh, tailored towards self care and recovery and just the therapy end of the process of painting, not just like, Hey, here's my end result. But I like to talk more about the process of painting. And that part has been very therapeutic for myself. Um, I started painting the, during the pandemic and um, it just turned into uh, something that I, I did to just kind of escape relax and unwind as the band says so without further ado folks um i'm gonna bring on our featured guest what and she gets a little bit of the intro comeback thanks boys back in the forest folks we have an artist all the way in maine back east grab your brush, let's paint grab your brush this Jen paint together it's now with miss jen hey one more time <laughs> I, didn't to watch it. Bloody. I didn't want to watch it i was like oh man <laughs> oh. sorry oops i just hit the wrong button there how are you jen oh my i God. am doing well thank you i uh i was so um happy to have my first guest with it which is a good friend of yours hope and um i was like oh rick we have a guest is this crazy it's working you know <laughs> what i mean and then uh she told us about yourself and um, she goes now she's a very awesome artist she's just a little bit shy about coming on 
and <laughs> she's she's uh the whole being on camera thing is something new for her and everything so is this yep. the first time you've been uh, on like a live broadcasting type of thing yeah. yep wow yep i'm even not so great at um videoing my painting process I'm yeah trying to get better at it but <laughs> cameras and me generally don't mix <laughs> well i gotta tell you um I have uh, got through so much um, like bad emotions over the years as, as far as with like anxieties and things like that. And, and to put a camera in front of me for some reason, like, like I couldn't even think about what I wanted to say, how to say it. And I it was just trying to memorize stuff and it come up awkward and all that, you know? And then um, we uh, started to do, to do the uh, broadcasting thing for uh, during the pandemic for my classmates. And um, I would just get us started and I wouldn't, I wouldn't lead it. I would just kind of like, well, here's someone else. All right, guys, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then uh, it's just been a progressive thing to get used to being on, um, on camera. You know, it's just time in the water. And um, I got to tell you, Tuesday, Jen, are you ready for this? So it's all about recovery, but I'll be one year sober on, on Tuesday. That uh, is awesome. From, 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 uh, from alcohol, no consumption. Although I did have some rubbing alcohol that I was using the other day, but I don't think that counts. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think that one counts. <laughs> it was on my skin. Uh, and some uh, mouthwash. I had a little alcohol in that, but that, I don't think that counts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as like the anxieties and the nervousness and the sadness, depression, like all that stuff, you know, usually someone would would drink to feel better so they wouldn't have it, but not realizing well, you know, when that wears off, <laughs> you're going to be even in a worse shape than you were beforehand. You know what I mean? Exactly. So exactly. Uh, tell us about yourself. I'm just kind of curious before we start to kind of uh, get into painting and seeing what projects you're currently working on. But so you're the East Coast. Have you always lived back there? And then one last thing. I thought you were in Germany. And tell, tell us about that. I was like, oh, no, she's yep. in Germany. Oh, man. So originally I'm from Florida. Um, grew up in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I met my husband in Florida. He joined the military after we had our first child. And um, we were stationed in Georgia for the most part. But the last three and a half years, we were stationed in Germany. And then wow. when he left the army, we went back to Florida. Um, I realized very quickly that the older I get, um, I can't handle heat anymore. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> we went to the least hot place that we could find in the continental u.s <laughs> wow yeah so we moved up to maine and we love it it's just, it's nice it's quiet we're surrounded by forests and mountains and lakes and rivers and it's beautiful it's beautiful there yeah it's amazing mm -hmm. i um uh i'm not sure if I, I haven't told you this yet but i actually lived in uh, hampton falls new hampshire you know familiar with that area at all or no no from not for the most part we're uh, up in holton maine so we're up at the very very top very in very top <laughs> yeah we we uh i i basically uh 2002 i i i took a um a, a cross-country trip all the way to new hampshire which was crazy but i was young and i didn't you know i didn't realize how uh it was going to take like six or seven days just to get there and you know yeah. what i mean i was like <laughs> she just flew and ran into car um but yeah, it's it's piercing cold in the sun or the uh, in the winter. Yeah, you have to is. you have to strategize it. You know, <laughs> you can't just walk outside. You have to go like, okay, I'm gonna go out, start my car, turn on the the heater, and then go back inside, make my coffee, eat breakfast, and then go back outside, uh, and then remember where you parked because all this it may snow, and then you won't find your car. <laughs> and I didn't have one of those, doo -doo, you know, to find out where my car is. I like, what's the shape of my car with snow on it rather than, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, so what, what got you into painting and, and uh, where, where did your uh, artistry history start? So um, I used to draw I, a lot when I was a kid. Um, I pretty much always had a piece of paper and a pencil in my hand as a kid. Mm -hmm. And as we grow older, you know, life kind of gets in the way a little bit. And a lot in my case. Um, about a year ago, um, I was at work and I was doing um, just team building exercises with the people I work with. And we decided to do some paint and sips. Yeah. Um, I'm not. So paint and sips? Is that what you said? 
paint and sips where usually people oh, have like wine and cheese and stuff. Oh, sips. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got yeah. it. I'm not a big drinker, but I loved the painting. Um, so we did a couple of those and I was like, I really love painting. Yeah. And right? um, my husband and I for date night one night, I said, well, I'm sure we can do this at home. There's got to be ways to do it at home. <laughs> you can buy <laughs> and, it. Right? So I jumped on YouTube, found some YouTube tutorials. Um, Michelle, the painter was who I started with. Yeah. And I just, I loved painting. And after that, um, July of last year, I started with the Milan Mastery Program. Um, they're all wow. over Facebook and Instagram yeah. and everything. Um, and my skills just skyrocketed. And I absolutely love it. And their program is designed to take you from where you're at to a professional painter in a year. So I'm a little over a year. I've taken a little bit longer, but I've got a full time day job that I have to go to for the time being. <laughs> yeah. So so is it it's an online artistry? Wow, yep, everything is online. That. They have a huge community that they built up. Um I absolutely love the program. Um and it's really geared towards giving you the skills that you need, um helping you to find your voice and your style and then helping teaching you the marketing aspect um that is you don't really get with a traditional art education. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I didn't realize that even existed. I'm interested. I'm about to, I'll have to get the information from you later. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if anyone out there is watching, they want to do the same, maybe we'll put it in the comments, you know what I mean? Uh, to find yeah, out absolutely. more about it. So um, I'm going to go through a couple of your projects, if you don't mind. I already kind of yeah, showed absolutely. some of them in the intro. And, uh, you know, oh, wow, he's already showing my stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just... Um, Here's here's a couple of them. If there's some of them that uh, speak out to you more than than others, and um, but I love this one. This is great. that one is actually one of my favorites. It's my the painting that I just finished, and actually that's a work in progress. Uh -huh. um, let me see. Oh, she's left us, folks. Oh, oh, I'm right back. <laughs> and she's back. this is where oh, it's at now. I don't know if you can see it. But it, it is there you go. my. I know you're you you're on uh, the blurred, uh, blurred. Yeah, that's no, great. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I guess I guess see the bird, but the outside of the bird is yeah. uh, a little blurred. But uh, yeah, so, no, it's 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 great. No, I went through your work. So you've only been painting for like a year. Yeah, July of last year, July of Holy 2023. Smokes. Yeah, here, folks. This, uh, you never know. You have it in you until you just, um, start doing it. I mean, there's a lot of uh um a gift you, you've been gifted you've been gifted this and it, it's it's great to be able to express it thank you I, I credit a lot of it to the mastery program um <laughs> my early paintings were not so great <laughs> but um yeah i've just i've taken to it and i absolutely love it it makes me happy and so um, whenever, what was your, your, your turning point? Was it just the, the sip night, as you call it? Was that your turning point? Wow, this is kind of interesting. Or, or was that your, your main moment um, of? I think it was. Um, the job that I have, I'm the clerk of court for my local courthouse. So I kind of run my local courthouse up here. Um, it's extraordinarily stressful. <laughs> and to have that release where I can just let go and focus and you just get into a different mind space when you paint yeah. and all of the troubles all of the worries all of the stress just melts away and it's just you and the paintbrush and the canvas it's and an escape it's know? just that state that you get into was i think i fell in love with that more than anything <laughs> in the beginning that's great. And then, uh, yeah, I was doing the similar thing to watching uh, um, uh, videos on YouTube, and uh, it's called ASMR. I'm trying to think of what the what the acronym stands for: auto auto autonomic sensory meridian response, if I have it right. But it's basically kind of like a feeling or a sensation you get whenever you get locked into artistry like that, and. Uh, 
that's a very therapeutic. And uh, sometimes at night I'll just turn on some type of random tutorial just to relax. And it's and then once you start watching and be like, oh, that's what you do. Oh, well, then that. Oh, you know, then mm -hmm. um, I, I started with the, uh, you know, just trying to figure out clouds, trying to figure out tr trees. Uh, my first project, uh, I don't have it in, in the queue to show you, but uh, one of my first uh, projects, I was doing a sunset at uh, Michael's and we we had like kind of like a one of those little classes like you're talking about, but mm -hmm. it was in like in a Michael's. And I literally thought, you know what? This actually looks better upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so I went upside down and looked even better. If it, if that goes to show you, like how, how where my uh, uh, artistry kind of started, and I had no anticipation of continuing. It was like, oh, let's give it all on a whim. And then um, I was trying to uh, find something for Rachel for her for uh, Christmas, and so I painted like a Santa Claus thing. And I would just got like you said, I just got uh, kind of like into watching tutorials, and and it's just fascinating to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, also, I wanted to uh, show this right quick before we kind of get into doing some some painting live. So, tell me about what went on here. All, all of those projects are your projects, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, um, so that was the first time I did um, an art fair that was local. Mm -hmm. um, I sold about ten paintings, which was awesome. Wow. Um, yep. That's amazing. That's a big confidence boost whenever you are able to uh, sell 10 paintings. Wow. And mm -hmm. how many days are you out there? Just one. Just one day? Wow. Mm -hmm. I would have been stoked on one. I would be like, hey, I sold one. You know what I mean? You got 10. That's great. Yep. Was your, what was your husband's name, by the way? Chris. Chris. Was Chris mm -hmm. out there flagging people over to, hey, come check this out? Was he being a mm -hmm. salesperson? No, nope, he was sitting right beside me. He was kind of letting me take the wheels and encouraging me because, again, I'm just really generally shy. <laughs> so he's like, you can do it, baby. Talk to people and you got it. <laughs> oh, so that's a win right there to kind of get past that that window of uh, mm -hmm. social window. You know what I mean? Um, uh, so let's let's chat about uh, what are you currently working on? Um uh, let me do this. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of it. So I'll just go ahead. We have a camera two. Wait, this, is that it? No, that's not it. Let's do this. You do have a camera two. Bam, folks. Check this out. Technology. Uh, so is, tell us the story behind this guy. Girl, sorry. Yep. Um, so a lot of what I do, it has elements of realism and abstract. Uh -huh. And... Um, I was sitting here, we were watching memoirs of a geisha and just the beauty and sadness all at the same time of that movie and what the woman goes through. Yeah. Um, just kind of got in my brain and I'm like, I've got to paint a geisha. So I went through and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I typically like to paint animals. So that's why we have the heron in it. I think they're just, they're graceful and, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of, I'm impressed by the faces face too, because, uh, I, uh, I have a Kobe Bryant project that I was trying to paint for my dad and I spent like two days just on the face and I still like, he just looks like a dude wearing a Kobe Bryant Jersey. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, the body's great, but, but to paint faces, it's mm -hmm. such a detailed, um, I don't know. I just, um, I was trying to actually do a Bob Marley and he turned out looking like Post Malone. You know, <laughs> I could even show you. I, he does kind of look at Post Malone. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, so what do, do you just, just let your, he's just naturally, well, you've, 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 uh, you've been drawing ever since you've been a, a youngster. So then mm -hmm. th th that kind of transitioned into just using the brush. Um, not really. Um, I honestly still struggle with people and faces. Animals come much easier to me <laughs> than yeah. the people do. Um, so I build up my paintings, um, through kind of a mixed media level. So yeah. I usually start with washes, spray paint, um, acrylic inks to kind of kill the white of the background. 
And with like with this one, I used, I want to say it was charcoal, like a vine mm -hmm. charcoal to draw in the features. Yeah. And get kind of a rough outline so that I kind of know where the shapes and different lines and different planes are of the face. Um, then I use acrylics to block in like your big shapes of color. Yeah. Wow. And once I have that done, then I work with oils to kind of really refine it and make it. So pop. you learned all this through your online course. They, they kind of gave you all that knowledge and detail. Wow. I gotta, I gotta sign yep. up. I gotta sign yeah. up. Yeah. Wow. They start with, um, oil painting and drawing. So they really give you the skills um, to learn how to draw if you didn't know or if you know how to draw, but you didn't quite have the refinement and skill. Yeah. Um, so the whole first part is oil painting and um, drawing. And um, the second part of that is mixed media where you get to play with everything, spray paint, mark making, inks, acrylics, like all of the things yeah. <laughs> the amount of things you play with is a lot. And then wow. you, from there you get to figure out what things that you like to do. Yeah. Which There's you gravitate some... towards uh, exactly. mostly, right? Yep. Did you find yourself like uh, having it with, that was easier for you than others? You know, like you, was it the painting that you had like more of a, more of a, like comes came easier to you, you know, like you felt like you're more gifted in, in the, the painting realm or do you do chalk as well and stuff like that? Um, not really chalk. Um, I really love charcoal. Um, charcoal is one of my favorite mediums to use. Um, especially when drawing out subjects, I love charcoal. Um, yeah. not really a huge fan of the graphite and I don't really play with pastels a whole lot. Um, I didn't really like, doing with dealing with those too much. Um, but I love acrylic because I'm a fast painter. I like things mm -hmm. to go fast. If I spend too long on a piece. Yeah. Sorry. Projects. I was like, yeah. wow, you must. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love oil paint. I love the way it goes on. I love the way it looks. Yeah. But it's a patience that you have to have with oil paint because it has to dry. Yeah. Um, with each, you can only add so much to it before it starts getting muddy and start the color starts getting gross intertwined. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to know, okay, I have to stop here, <laughs> which is usually why I end up having four or five paintings going at one time because I can only get so far with the oils before I have to wait for it to dry. Yeah. It could be, uh, Cause a, a lot of times you want to put paint, like a color on top of a color, but you have to wait for that color to dry before you can layer it. Right. Yeah. And uh, how, how, cause I just do the um, acrylics and I, I do some drawing, but I do more acrylic. Sometimes I draw on the canvas, then I uh, paint on top of that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But uh, how, how long does it take for the, uh, the, uh, the oils to dry? Is it like a two day process or it depends on the it temperature really in the room? Or? Yeah. It really depends on a couple of factors. Location plays a big part, big part of it. If you're in Arizona or the California desert, odds are your oil paint's going to dry really fast. Yeah. If you're in Florida or certain times of the year in Maine where it's real humid, it'll take longer for that oil paint to dry. Right. Um, the upside is there are some mediums that you can use to speed up the drying process or slow the drying process. So yeah. a lot of your galkids or liquid will speed it up. So it'll be dry the next day. Wow. Like you do, do you put like heat uh, on it as well? Like no, nope. no, nope. do the enough? heat doesn't work. Um, oil paint's a little bit different than the acrylics, um, so oil paint actually has to harden and cure where the acrylics can dry. So the acrylics you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer and dry the acrylics, but the only way to fast dry an oil painting with heat would be to stick it in like an oven or a kiln at a super low temperature. I think it's like 200 for a couple hours and that would cure the oil paint. Although I have never been brave enough to do that. So. <laughs> wow. There's a lot to unfold. I didn't realize all you, so you can do this anywhere. I mean, as far as with the online course to that see, so you should be one of their reps. You should do the, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, 
I tell you what, I really, really believe in them. They are a great group of people that really care about the artists. And it, what's great about it is that they're a very uplifting community. So yeah. it is all about one of the things that you learn in the mastery program is, and it's connected to your voice and your style as an artist, is that you take that your greatest pain, the, the things that have really affected you on a deep level and you turn those around and make those your superpower. So yeah. in my case, I've always struggled with self-confidence and not feeling good enough and turning that around to be a service to let other people know that they are good enough, that you can do this. You, there you go. You got this. <laughs> and Yeah. You know, There's a lot of power in the brush, you know? There's a lot exactly. of- Exactly. You know? And uh, I, I, I like- you know, I, I have saw. I don't, you can't see it because of my because of my forest. But you know, outside my forest, there's uh, paintings behind me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when you walk into a room that you put like a little gallery, you're mm -hmm. like, wow, I did all. You know, it just kind of like builds you up to see. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, it's it, it inspire. It's self inspiring, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, because you're like, well, you know what. What can I do next? I, I don't know. I'll have to paint and find out what happens. I don't even know what's going to happen when it, when you get into like a zone. It's kind of like uh, like someone playing the guitar. You know, you don't know. What did you come up with that? I don't know. I just did it because I, you know, I mean, yeah, it just kind of happened. You know what I mean? But there's um, and I, there's always that that zone you get into like after the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and then you're like you're saying your your paint pace uh speeds up, and then you know, this starts to flow. And then, uh, and then somebody calls you in to do something from the other room. You're like, no, I'm in my zone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, but, uh, but, uh, have you noticed though, uh, when you leave, when you kind of like say your paint pace slows down, it's a probably a good idea for, to do two things is one, maybe leave the room, go get a drink, get a drink or do something. And then when you walk back in, it's like you have new goggles that just came on. Like, oh, that's what I was missing. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at it from a different perspective, you know, Absolutely. Um, my mom is uh, is also an artist, um, but I didn't actually get into painting until recently because I was too all over the place. My ADHD or whatever, you know, I just like, ah, uh, but, uh, you know, sit down, sit still and try this out. Uh, but uh, uh, she was saying that if you look at your, your painting in a mirror and see the reverse of your painting a lot of the times you can pick up on something right off the get-go like you didn't spot before i was mm -hmm. like interesting that is true I didn't realize that you know yeah. um but uh let's let's uh let, let's do this uh why don't we get into uh doing some painting and if you're at at, the, at home and you want to paint right along with us and i was i had the idea though as if somebody wanted to um in the comments when they're done take a picture of with what they did and send it to us That'd be great too. Uh, you can send it to me on my messenger if I have you on Facebook and then um, I can post it for you and uh, that'd be great as well. But I'm always can, uh, interested on what direction people take with their artistry. And like you say, it's a lot of emotion that's tied to it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, um, Rick, that's the, uh, our, my co-host that's not here today. Um, he, he, uh, he did a drug and alcohol. He did drug and alcohol, um, uh, he was a drug and alcohol counselor and he would, he introduced painting to the group and he said, well, today we're going to paint where your pain is. Like if your pain was on canvas, what would it look like? And, you know, not just, er, you know, <laughs> but uh, to, what it, to literally like, what is, what would it be? And then just the opposite, what would your freedom look like? What would, from the pain, what would that look like? And we'll have that on the next project and seeing the emotional roller coaster people go through, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's always kind of fascinating to me. Um, but um, so uh, again, with, with your project, um, so this one is, is this one, a, uh, uh, what was your, your your process with constructing it actually because i know yeah. we know the story behind it but what how, what was your like what was the first thing you think of whenever you start to put it on canvas um when i'm starting with a blank canvas yeah i mean yeah i mean if you could think well you want to get the background in first to uh like what what type of painted paint did you use to you know what was your process yep so this one was um See if I can do this. 
acrylic washes is what I started out with this one. Uh huh. Um, and it's basically just to get rid of the white because sometimes if you're painting on a white canvas, you're battling that white the whole time. Yeah. Um, and then laying out, like blocking in the different shapes. So, um, I went in with the acrylic washes to get, um, the hair, the dark parts of the hair and the bird, um, and a lot of, um, the different colors and the kimono. Those are all acrylic washes. So okay. just a lot of water and, um, heavy body acrylic paint mixed in. And then um, once that layer dries, then the charcoal to get um, more of the face drawn in so I know where all the proportions and everything go. And then from there, I used um, acrylic to a heavier acrylic to block in um, the different planes of the face and to try to get some of the values in. And then from there, um, it's just adding more and more stacking acrylic on top of acrylic until I get it to a place where I'm like, okay, I'm ready for oils. And now I've been in oils for okay. a while. Okay. So you used uh, acrylics, uh, uh, charcoal and oils within mm -hmm. the same project. Yep. Wow. wow. I didn't even think of doing that. I thought you had to like pick one and you had to like, boom. No, but you do have you know? to go in a specific order. Order. The order has to be there, right? The so order acrylics has have to, to last. <laughs> so you can use um, acrylic is generally first anything water based. Mm -hmm. um, you can put charcoal right on top of the acrylic, but before you move on to something else wet, you have to seal it with a fixative. Um, then you can continue to go into water based. Um, so anything. a fix a fixative is, is that like a spray or what yep. is a fixative? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's like a spray. Wow. Yep. Yeah. You spray that down. It makes the charcoal stay because otherwise the charcoal will run if you go to put something wet on top of it. Um, so you can keep layering all kinds of um, anything water-based on top of each other. The important point is once you move to oil, you can only use oil. Yeah. You oh, I got go you. you. So you do that at the end. The yeah. uh, I really think that, and I, I'm I'm talking to myself in these regards too, because I've always wanted to get a project uh, down and then uh, film it, the process, mm -hmm. having an over over the shoulder shot, and then yours is like crazy. You have so much different things that are involved. It's uh, me. I just have my brush and some acrylic, and I just put it on canvas, and there you go. <laughs> uh <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very raw uh but yeah then you could even have some music have it going fast and then you can have it like in uh graphics saying what you're doing next if you want and then uh you know if i if I, in the perfect world you'd be chiming in here and there along the way but you know but yep. uh doing the, the voiceover on it yeah that would be great because i would watch it for sure because mm -hmm. i've never even seen a video like that to be honest with you that said, well, first, then I do this, and then this happens. Then you can't do this when you do that, but because the, this will happen, so then you go in this direction. And um, it's not a very good impression of your voice, is it? I was, I need more work on it. <laughs> um, well, um, we we do have um, a uh, a private patent chat that's going to be right after this, uh, right after we wrap up. And I'm going to put the the link below for anyone who wants to join and. Uh, um, and uh, share their projects and everything too. So, um, so what, what are you? What are you currently? Because it looks like a finished product project from from here. Is there anything else that you're adding to your your project? Yeah, I've got to add some more whites into the flowers. I need to work on the flower and her hair a little bit more. Um, and I think I want to add some more of. I need to finish the bird because that's not quite as refined as I like them. Yeah. Um, and then I think I'm going to add some of this magenta -y color into her face a little bit to give her face a little bit more pop. I'm still kind of blown away because if you were to tell, told me that uh, you've been painting for 20 plus years, I was okay, cool. And then it would all tie together. But what you're telling me all this, it doesn't even make sense because <laughs> you know uh, you have all this knowledge and it, you're still so you're 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 just past your rookie year in in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Just Seriously. past my rookie year. I'm telling you, this <laughs> program is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I bet. there's no way I could be where I am now without it. 
Yeah. Did did Hope go through the same uh, project, by the way? No. Um, Hope actually went to art school, if I'm not mistaken. I think she got her degree in, I think it. Oh, she did say that. That's work. correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, she went to an actual traditional art school. Here's a quick shot of you guys of uh, Hope I actually threw in the queue. Boom. That's, a, that's that look on her face like, you know what? I think I'm going <laughs> to get a cup of coffee. Uh, how did you meet her, by the way? Um, actually our daughters are friends. Um, they, they were in, um, the local technical school. Um, and they met up, um, they were, did, they were part of a competition, um, for states and both of them won gold medals in states. And yeah. that's where they met. They were roommates at the competition. Wow. And so they, were you guys... Out. So you guys were happened to hang out together because they were, then you guys just started. Uh, did she allure you into doing a painting at that point or no? No, um, I actually really started talking to her. Um, our daughters had been friends for a little over a year and they would hang out and then we became Facebook friends and then she saw my art and I saw her art. And then so we started talking. <laughs> Wow. Okay. I, I, I just get so lured into seeing someone's uh, artwork. Um, and uh, also with, with music too, you know, and I, th those two kind of go hand in hand with me. One's more visual, one's more uh, audible, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but um, also uh, I am going to start having some uh, musical guest folks on the, on the Peyton chat and uh, having them play some music in the background uh, while we're uh, while we're painting and uh, that painting awesome. chatting, it'd be kind of fun to do. Uh, I have uh, actually I have three to four people uh, lined up who want to do it. I kind of threw them the concept, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I go, "Well, you're going to be playing anyway. Just kind of play, play in the background, and we'll have like a little, you know, uh, broadcast about your your work and to get your name out there. It'd be kind of interesting for people to get to know who, what you're about because they can hear your music, but it, sometimes you get lured into like with painting artistry to to music when you know more about the person you know what mm -hmm. i mean i mean how many like even sporting events how many you know so much about the person but uh it, that lures you into wanting to watch the game because you know oh you know he has he has kids and this is his hobbies how do you know so much about these players <laughs> well that's how they that's how they get you they get you interested you know what yeah. i mean so um did you have anything coming up in the horizon uh any any other uh art fairs or anything coming up? Not at the moment. Um, I'm trying to focus on finishing the mastery program. I've got four more paintings and a website to build. <laughs> so oh, wow. I'm trying to focus on getting that done. Um, and once I get that done, figuring out, um, start applying to galleries and figuring out prints and products and social media marketing and all of the fun other stuff wow. that goes into being an artist. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, is it like a, do you have to pick either an arm or a leg to give them to be into this program? How much, uh, how, what is it uh, costly or? Um, like honestly, so yes and no. Um, it's actually not bad. And the value that you get from it is more than worth it. So for the year long program, it's a little over three thousand uh -huh. dollars. They do monthly program or monthly payments for I believe it's as low as a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, it includes group coaching, all of their master classes that people that are not in the program have to pay for are free to anybody that's in the program. There's group coaching, so they have um, mentors that have gone through the program and are now professional artists that will critique your work and are with you to ask answer questions every step of the way it's fantastic so to a lot of people three thousand dollars i think it's like 3500 or something like that i can't remember the exact price yeah is a lot of money especially with the economy being what it is yeah but they try to make it as absolutely accessible as possible so and when you compare it to a traditional art school that can cost sixty thousand dollars a year it's yeah. really affordable. <laughs> wow, that's true too. Plus, uh, you know, if they're showing you how to turn around and sell your projects, mm -hmm. that's also uh, you get your money back uh, 
you know, within the next year. Well, like with you, you have one art. I like that. I probably paid for it all together was just that one afternoon of selling projects, right? Yeah. And there are students that completely, especially so being shy, I've kind of limited myself social media wise. So I don't have a big social media following. But there are people that have been on social media for years that have a, just a big following from doing social media for years. And they regularly sell their student artwork and pay for the program through selling their artwork that they make as a student. It's, it's a fantastic program. It really is. Wow. Okay. And then how, how long did you say it lasts for with their project? Is it uh, your own self-pace? or what, It's what? your own self-pace. It's designed to be taken in a year. Um, but really it, it's up to you how quickly or, um, how long it takes you. So the average is about a year, a little over a year. Um, there are people that have taken it in three months. Yeah. I cannot imagine the amount of work that that is, <laughs> but I mean, there are some that ha that take it that quickly. Um, and then other people because of day jobs, family commitments, things like yeah. that, they go through it a little bit slower and it may take them two years. Or, you know, they have a, a large life event that happens in the middle and, you know, it may take them three years or longer. It's really up to you how fast you want to go, um, yeah. but it's designed to be done within a year. Wow. There you go. You get literally what you learned is uh, you get it started, then you can sell an art project and then you could just make that next payment, sell another art project. It's just, you know what I mean? You can almost like get started and then you could just sell some art projects to pay for your schooling at the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it, it really is a fantastic program. I, I can't speak highly enough about it. That it amazes me how far I've come from where I started. Yeah. Uh, real quick, before I forget to ask, how was your anniversary after all this? <laughs> <laughs> you had your wedding anniversary is yesterday or is it literally today? It's today. It's our 20th wow. anniversary today. Too wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yep. We've been together. Uh, for can years. I, can I ask you, did you, what'd you guys do yesterday? Cause you said you planned on yesterday being the actual festivities. Uh, yep. Yesterday, so yesterday right? um, we got up early. We went down to Bangor. We went to an art museum in downtown Bangor and they had a little art festival there. So we walked around the art festival and looking at art. And then we had a fantastic um, dinner at a hibachi restaurant. And then we went shopping and I got a whole bunch of new canvases because I needed canvases. <laughs> and then oh, came home and just had movie night and just got to hang out together and doing what we love. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, we, well, I'll try not to keep you too long. We'll go ahead and wrap, wrap this guy up. This, uh, um, uh, the broadcasting up and transition into a. I sent you the link and I'll post the link for the private, um, um, for the private chat. Uh, I'm actually working. I don't know if you can see this. I so I have a, I have a a follower that um, supporting Rachel's recovery. The my wife and um, she is so sweet. She has she asked for our address to to mail us. Melissa a card and that was like a couple years ago and she mails uh cards out to us throughout the year like some was like a just because card and just you know hey i just wanted to um and she's she's been so sweet and supportive over the years that i uh gave her a i don't want all love to just go from one side i feel awkward so i'm like i'm gonna do something for you what are you what are you into in regards to like to look at, I mean, are you into animals? Are you into like, what, what is your thing? You know what I mean? And she says flamingos. And I was like, flamingos, that's random. You know, I go, I never mm -hmm. thought of, uh, then I actually, I looked on her page, uh, you know, to get some ideas uh, of, of uh, flamingos. And she goes, yeah, I have a couple of my, on my page. And like all of her profile <laughs> pictures are <laughs> of flamingos all over the place. Um, so I started, I'm just saying if you could see it, I started, I still have some work to do because I, I did some research on flamingos because uh, I, I like to get very specific on the, on what you're doing because I don't want to finish it and go, oh, the male flamingo is supposed to have the smaller mouth. I thought it, this would look better, but it's not, it's not real. You know, it's like the realism thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you could see, I can't, I can't even see if too, oh, there it is. See that, oh. that's. 
uh the male the male guy over here he has a bigger beak than the female and then he's actually uh more of a redder tint i gotta fix the color on it she actually is supposed to be more white white with with the with the pink and mm -hmm. i didn't realize like they turn colors flamingos turn turn colors like that because of their environment of the uh, with what they eat mm -hmm. and I, I guess the the iodine in the uh shrimp turns it turns to pink is that mm -hmm. crazy yeah no and here's the funny question do you know why they um the females are lighter than the males why is that it has to do with um they sat the sacrifices they make for their offspring so say, so say that again they're lighter because of the sacrifices yep it has i can't remember if it has to do with the them feeding the nutrients that they would need to turn themselves to be pink oh i see offspring but it it's something like that so they sacrifice their own selves their own consumption in order to feed their kids yep what's wrong with these fathers nowadays you know, <laughs> you know what i mean these flamingo dads dude <laughs> he should go hunting more or something uh yeah it's fascinating and i was looking like the chilean uh, flamingos because i was watching a video just showing them all around the world because i was trying to figure out I, I was like maybe i'll watch miami vice intro a couple times and figure it out but instead <laughs> i uh i ended up uh, doing some research on it i'm aging myself but i remember all the flamingos in the intro <laughs> of miami you know mm -hmm. but um yeah it's uh i uh I, i'm doing this project for her and uh, i i like to do a little bit of like a uh, a sample one which is a smaller one before i do a larger one to mm -hmm. kind of get some ideas put it on canvas uh do a larger one and uh i mentioned in a previous episode of this is um i like to keep one gift one and then sell one you know what i mean it would be my perfect little setup you know so i can have one in the future that i can have as my own um mm -hmm. uh, and that but there is a certain joy that i get out of like painting something for someone that's uh, something personal that they're into, you know, not something that I think that they should like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, um, um, it makes for great Christmas gifts, folks. You should get into painting and, uh, paint your spouse, paint your, your kids, something or a friend, uh, but, uh, finding out what they're into and painting something for them specifically. There's a, there's a big joy you get out of it. I tell you, have you, have you painted for someone specifically like that to what's what they're, yeah. Um, my husband actually, he loves wolves and for father's day, I had painted a piece on paper of a wolf yeah. and I had it framed and gave it to him for father's day. And oh. that was hanging in our bedroom. Oh, that's great. That's yep. great. Oh, uh, quickly, just real quick. I got to say something about this one. I didn't feature quite yet before we let you go here. What is going on with this? I love that. That's the little promo for today. I was using um that is a magnificent a tiger here i mean it's the uh, dimensions and everything the coloring uh bravo well done thank you i love yeah. tigers they're one of my you know when we get into artist block sometimes and we don't know what to paint or what to do i yeah. can always paint a tiger <laughs> and that will lead me to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing do you, do you do you ever like uh like if you walk past uh, an image or something that you're like wow wow that's great like something that just stops you in your tracks i have to take a picture of it and mm -hmm. i file it in my phone under uh perspective artistry and mm -hmm. i have like if when i get to where like you say you get in, like a little bit of a block don't know what to do next i go through my files on that to get oh i've been wanting to do this one. i almost forgot about this one and then yep. that turns into be my project <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah and i like the idea of have multiple projects going too because you take a breather from this it's like learning one song on the guitar and sticking to the one and only song mm -hmm. you know have a couple songs you, you play have some diversity right <laughs> uh well tell you what um we're gonna go ahead and and exit out of the broadcast and get into painting on the um on the uh uh, uh the prop the public forum I'm going to put the um, link into the um, comments below. And um, um, yeah, we're going to pay, pay and chat and continue. But then we got a good, really good idea of what uh, what makes uh, Jen tick. So uh, this is great. Uh, I'm glad you uh, were able to make it today. And you had a great um, anniversary. And I 
uh, sorry about last weekend. Rachel's health was kind of not doing no, good at the moment. Absolutely and... did exactly what you should have done. So we are all good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the, I think I already sent you over the link. I'll put it yep. into the comments. Um, and we'll transition into the the private show, folks, where it all goes down. Uh, let me play. How did you like the intro, by the way? Was that fun? It was awesome. <laughs> you got to gotta hand it to AI. Sorry, guys. Uh, they're <laughs> not really back there. I'm just playing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, crazy what that will do. Uh, go ahead and throw it in there. Oh, I like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, exceed you out, and I'll see you in the private chat. Sounds good. Thanks again, Jan. You're always fun. Thanks. All right. All right, guys. That was fun. She is an amazing artist. A lot of info. Uh, yeah. Jump into that online class. I think I'm going to look into it as well. And um, it just she just blew me away, folks. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, until next time, we're going to have the uh, Peyton chat. I will just put out, out a little bit of a promo uh, when the next one is, and it will always be on a weekend, on a Saturday or Sunday. And, um, yeah, keep it keep it going with Brush, guys. Keep on Peyton. Keep on chatting while you're Peyton. Um, helps you uh, feel great. You know what I mean? Helps with your own personal growth, your self-care. Um this is great. I'm just, I can't advocate enough for it. And that's why we're here. So uh, much love. And also my input channel on YouTube, the indoors paid chat, please subscribe. Help build the art community. Yeah, I was waiting for it. Expand our community. All right, guys, until next time. Boom. Brush on canvas. Love you guys.